Okay, so you're ready to do your first drop. But you're wondering, should you stock inventory of your first line or should you just do pre-orders and base all your orders off of that? Which one should you be doing? It's a tough call, but something we should talk about. So let's discuss. Next, here I'm making the brand. What's up everybody, Rob Norman here from Planet Brooklyn Academy, and this is Making the Brand. The series where I give you a little knowledge and insight on how to start a clothing brand, and if you already have one, how to make it better. As always, please hit that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything I drop when it drops. So a subscriber hit me in the DM and asked me a very good question. They were asking which would be better to do starting off the line doing a stock, having all your inventory in stock and selling that, or doing pre-orders. And the thing about that is, is that there are two trains of thought when you're doing this. Um, both have their pros and cons. The inventory one has more cons than pros, and of course the pre-orders have pros and a few cons. But either which way, it's more about which one you feel more comfortable with. So let's start with inventory. If you have inventory, first thing off, right off the bat, you gotta have money to buy inventory. So that's kind of the con with this one because you gotta buy your inventory up front. Now, where people go wrong with this is that a lot of times they're not aware of what the sweet spot is in their orders. And when I say what the sweet spot is, knowing your size ranges that will sell the best. A lot of times what people will do is they'll just order across the board. So if you're going from small to so say 2X, people will order like they may do like six pieces of small, six pieces of medium, all the way up to 2X. Now, the problem with that is, is if you're doing a men's line, the sizes that don't sell the most are smalls and 2Xs. Those are the ones that sell the slowest. The ones that do sell the most are always mediums and larges that sells out the fastest. And then next after that will be your larges. And then comes your small and your 2X. Now, if your line is a unisex line, even with women, you would think that, oh, smalls are gonna sell out, but they're not gonna sell out as fast as you would think. Because the thing is, you gotta also think about when you're selling to women, women don't always buy smalls because also women have breasts. So if they want something to fit, they're gonna go up to mediums or larges. So that case, you're not gonna move as many smalls as you would think. So again, this is why your mediums and larges will sell out faster. So you shouldn't put so much inventory into your smalls and into your two X's. Go a little bit lighter on those and go heavier in your mediums and larges. This way you'll save on inventory because if you buy across the board, like I said, if you do sixes across the board on every size, you're gonna get stuck with a lot of inventory that you can't move. So this is one of the problems of when you're gonna buy stock to sell. You're gonna run into the, the, the situation of not knowing what's gonna move and what will move. So you're better off buying less in certain sizes that you know that won't sell and just staying conservative on the sizes that you do know will sell. Because remember, this is your first launch. You'll get more information once you sell your first line, you'll know what sells better and what doesn't sell better. But in the interim of things, when you launch off, if you're gonna buy stock, just make sure you go you know, easy on the smaller sizes. Now, the next problem that you're gonna have is that if your brand is good, you're gonna sell through your inventory, no problem. That's what every brand wants. The problem is, is that what if the brand, if your, your release doesn't sell through? What happens then? You're stuck with inventory. Now you gotta try to move this inventory. So this is another con that comes with actually having stock, in-house stock. But do not fear. There are some things that you can do to get around this. So first of all, if you have stock, the good thing is that you can always take that product that you have and as it's selling online, you can go out to local stores that sell product that fit within your category of things you wanna do. If you're doing streetwear, I'm sure you'll be able to find retail stores like mom and pop stores that you can sell your product to or ask them, hey, I have a brand, I'm looking to, for a store to carry some of my product. And a lot of times they'll take it in if they like it and they'll do it on consignment. 
And what consignment is, is that they'll do things probably on a net 30. So they'll take your product for 30 days and they'll try to sell it. If they can sell it, when you come back in 30 days, they'll give you cash for it. And then they'll probably say, we want more product from you, which is a good thing. Worst case scenario, 30 days you come back, they don't sell it, they give you back your product. You're not out of any money, they're not out of space. Just basically, you get to test the market and try to move some product. So it's a kind of a win-win situation in that, in that scenario. But nonetheless, if you have stock, you've got to try to move it. Now, another thing to do is, you got to remember, we live in a day and age where everything is smoke and mirrors. Everything is not what it seems. And as you know, with social media, a lot of people portray and a lot of companies portray to be things that they really aren't. The catch is, is that you don't know what's real and what's not unless you work for the company. And you have to use that to your advantage as a lot of other companies do. So here's a little trick on how to maneuver and move product if you get stuck with it. So again, in the scenario that I said, if you're trying to sell your product and it doesn't move online and you're still stuck with it, if you put it as a release, so if you said, hey, we're dropping our new line on Friday and you dropped it on Friday and you only got a few sales, what you can do is two days after the drop, you can now take everything offline, take all your inventory offline. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna post on social media telling everybody, thank you for the successful you know, sell-throughs. It was amazing, everything sold out in one day. Anybody goes on your site, they're gonna see zero product. Now you're gonna thank everybody over the next couple of days on social media. About three days later, you're gonna repost saying, hey, thank you for all the messages, thank you for everything that I've heard from everybody, and we heard you guys, and back by popular demand, we're, do we're doing a new drop. We're gonna re restock and do a new drop. And then tell them that this Friday, new drop available at 12 noon. Now the thing is, is that no one knows how much inventory you bought. So they don't know how much you sold, they don't know how much you have. So with that being said, all you gotta do is that once you say you're gonna do a redrop, you just put all your inventory numbers back up in the system. So when people go online, they can buy it again. The thing is, is that you're gonna try to convince them that, hey, I missed out on that first release, but now there's a new release. So now I can try to buy it again. Hopefully that hype will help you sell more product. So little trick that people do in the industry and you can do it yourself, use it to your advantage. Now, another thing that I do when I do, you know, when I'm doing my orders and keeping stock, we also run a lot of Facebook ads and you cannot, I cannot stress enough that Facebook ads are necessary when you're trying to sell stuff online. Because if you want to move product and you want people to know about you, just posting online is not going to help alone. you got to run ads. So Facebook ads will help you also as you're trying to run and move this product. But that's what happens when you have stock. Now what happens when you look at the other side of things when you talk about doing pre-orders? Now the beauty of pre-orders is that you don't have to put any money up front. A lot of times people ask, well, don't I have to have some kind of imagery or something? Yeah, if you have samples, use your samples, shoot them, use it in your promotions. If you don't, you can CAD them up. There's a ton of 3D CADs and, you know, and realistic CADs that you can put your graphics on. Now, my recommendation is that if you're gonna do pre-orders, I say only do pre-orders with things like T-shirts, sweatshirts, anything that you can sew screen or um, heat transfer, anything like that, I recommend. Doing pre-orders doing pre-orders with cut and sews, a little bit harder. Because remember, with cut and sews, you have to have pre you have to have uh, minimums and you need time to produce them. So between the times that you're trying to get the money and saying the release is gonna happen, gets tricky. It's a lot easier with you know screen printing and stuff like that with t-shirts and sweatshirts because you can tr can control the uh, the production time and you know pretty much how long it's going to take to do that. So it's a lot easier to do pre-orders with that. You can do pre-orders with in-stock stuff. You can do that, you know, just to gauge how many people are going to buy. But when you don't want to put up any money up front for your inventory, best way to go is with t-shirts, sweatshirts, things like that that you can print. Do pre-orders with that. Now, when you set up your pre-orders, normally what I like to do is I like to give it at least three weeks. I like to advertise saying, hey, this is going to drop in three weeks. Once I know that and I'm promoting it, I'm also running my ads, I'm running my Facebook ads. And I don't spend a lot of money on Facebook ads. 
A lot of you may believe you have to spend a ton of money. I don't. For something like a drop that I'm going to do in three weeks, I will spend about $150 on Facebook ads. And $150 could yield me about $1,000 in sales. So, and that's just by running multiple ads, um, trying different uh, markets, uh, running different uh, graphics, trying different headlines. I do a bunch of those when I do a campaign. So I try out a lot of different things and whatever hits, I put more into that. Whatever doesn't, I turn those ads off or I rework them. So you do have to put work into your ads to make sure they run efficiently, but I run my ads while I'm also promoting. Now, the way this works is that I don't need to make a ton of sales in my initial. So to make it things simple for you, let's just figure my production, I need to sell, I need 24 pieces minimum to go into production. Let's just say that. Now, whatever I'm, whatever it costs me for my production, just know that's not all I'm charging my customer. I'm, cause I'm charging my customer double. So just figure, knowing that I'm charging them double, I only need to sell 12 pre-orders to cover my production of 24 pieces. So once I get 12 orders, my 24 pieces are covered. I'm fine now. I can, as many orders come in after that, I'm good because now I have covered my production and made a profit. And if I have to add on more, you know, screen prints or whatever after order, I can do that because I already reached my 12 quota. So as everything goes up, I can just keep printing. It's not a problem. I just got to meet that 12 um, order minimum. And that's easy to do. Like I said, as long as I'm running Facebook ads and I'm promoting it, I can get to 12. That's easy. So once I have that, I go into my production, I can say, all right, three weeks, I got three weeks till I got to ship. So I'm just building up everything. So now I've surpassed my orders that I needed. And now it's just basically icing on the cake at this point. Now I have ran into times where I have ran campaigns and things got kind of slow and it got closer to the release date and I still didn't have all the money for production and then it came in just in time. So you do have them situations, but yet we were still able, like we made the production and had it done. It's just mathematically looking at it. It was like, if we didn't have cash flow, we would be in a problem, but we had it and we ended up making our numbers and we sold through. So you can do the same thing. This is why I give it three weeks out because it gives you a good gauge of knowing how much money you have as you get halfway to that release date. And I always say items will be shipped, will begin shipping on X day. I don't say you'll receive it on this day. I'll say it'll start shipping on this day. So it gives me enough time in case anything comes in on that day or after that day, because you know shipping will take anywhere to three to five days. So I know I have a little leeway there. So think of it that way, but that's the good part about it. If you use, you know, uh, having people pay up front because you're getting all the cash, you don't come out of pocket, you can do your production and then ship. Now, the downside, to doing pre-orders is that what if you do not hit those numbers? If you don't hit your numbers to cover your production, then what you're gonna have to do is cancel the orders. Now, that's not a bad thing. You just don't wanna have to do it too often. So if initially you do it the first time you gotta cancel your orders, you just gotta cancel. At least you know like, hey, I don't have enough people following me to get those pre-orders. All right, so I know next time I need to do it differently. Also, once you know that you can't do that in pre-orders, it may make sense for you just to do stock, you know, buy bulk, you know, get your inventory and then sell from there. Because having inventory for this kind of situation, at least you know, I have product, I can move it. When you're trying to sell something you don't have yet and you gotta cancel it, it looks bad. So the first time you can say, hey, we didn't meet our quotas, you know, and we had a lot of numbers. Cause again, they don't know how many pieces you ordered. You could have just been ordering 24 pieces and you didn't get those orders. But you can tell your audience, you know what? We we're expecting to hit 500. We just came shy of it, but we had to cancel the numbers. We had to cancel the orders. We're sorry, but we will be doing it again. That's fine the first time. You do not want to do it the second time. If it doesn't, if your pre-orders do not work the first time, I highly recommend you go and get inventory and then sell those. And you can do it as a pre-order once you have your inventory. You could tell people, hey, pre-orders and you can see how it moves from there. But if you don't have the cash and you want to try to do pre-orders, you're going to have to market the hell out of it because you really need to get those orders. You got to hit those minimums so you can, you know, cover your production. So again, 
At the end of the day, it's really uh, a case of whether you have the money or don't have the money. Or if you have product and you just wanna see if you can raise more money, it's another way. Now, it gets a little tricky if you're trying to do multiple items and doing pre-orders. I personally would say start off with one item, do the pre-order, if it works, great. Then you can just do another pre-order and do multiple items as pre-orders, that's fine. But if it's your first time out the gate, pre-order is a little tricky. Because again, it's the reputation of your brand. You can't meet those demands then people are gonna look at you as like, oh, this brand, something's not right with them because they're always canceling. They do pre-orders and they're always canceling. That must mean they don't have a lot of following or they just don't have the capital to produce anything. You don't wanna come off like that your first time out the gate. So try it if you want to the first time or do a mix. You know, get a little inventory and then do pre-orders and see if you can sell what you have and get a gauge on how much people are buying. And then after that, you can just sell it regularly and then you can do pre-orders again for your next round or just do inventory and just say, hey, this is what we got. We're selling it and see how it moves. At the end of the day, whatever you do, I highly recommend running Facebook ads. It's gonna help you regardless. Can't just rely on, on your social media following unless you have a huge following then by all means, go ahead. You shouldn't have a problem. But if you're fresh out the gate, I say do a little mix of both. Um, I hope that helped you guys and gave you a little insight on doing pre-orders versus having inventory stock. Um, if you have any questions, please leave comments below. As always, I always answer them. And uh, yes, hopefully that helped. As always, I catch you guys on the next video. And don't forget to pick up that book, um, Making the Brand, that I'll leave the links below also for you guys to check the link. Uh, if you're just starting your clothing brand and need to know how the blueprint works, get my book. Until the next episode, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.